All right, folks, everything you wanted, needed to know about the World Cup coming to New Jersey. You find out right now with Jim Kirkus, who is president and CEO, Meadowlands Regional Chamber. Good to see you, Jim. Good to be here. Thanks for always having me. You got it. Let me also disclose that uh, Jim is a trustee of the Caucus Educational Corporation, our not-for-profit production company. Hey, Jim, the World Cup coming to New Jersey, when exactly? It's a big deal, uh, June into July of 2026, and it's uh, around the corner. Now, it, oh, hold on. This is a lot. This is six weeks of, of games? Yeah, pretty much. The opening game, uh, will, the opening preliminary round game start the middle of June, and the final will be right here at MetLife Stadium on, on July 19th. How big a deal from an economic point of view is this for the region and the state versus New York City, who's going to try to claim a lot of credit for this as they have a habit of doing? I'm just saying, Jim. Yeah. Now, listen, it's a it's it's I don't know that I can really articulate how big it is. You know, eight games that we'll have right here in the in the greater Meadowlands and here in New Jersey um, is it, it's an enormous amount of economic impact. I wish I could put uh, give you a, a number. Uh, I, I think from all the things that we've learned, Steve, over the past big events that have been at MetLife, you know, WrestleManias and past World Cups and Super and Bowl, big Super Bowl. Um, the fact of the matter is, I think we have learned the formula on what it's going to take to make sure we're capturing the eyeballs of the world and making sure that visitors that come in here for those five or six weeks, in some cases longer, to be part of World Cup 2026, that they find all the great experiences, where to stay, where to play, where to eat, where to shop, where to have fun. All of those things is, is, is in our purview this time. Got to ask you about logistics. You and I talk about leadership and logistics all the time. And the Super what do you know the remember the year the Super Bowl was at the Meadowlands? 14. 2014. I don't know. I heard a rumor that it was a bit challenging with uh, New Jersey Transit moving people around, not a rumor of fact. How the heck are we going to move all those people to where they need to go when they need to go there in a reasonable way? So, I'm going to be I'm going to tell you that New Jersey Transit gets a bad rap for that because it was it was really not their fault. Uh, there was a lot of people doing the planning for transportation and mobility for Super Bowl, uh, many of which had nothing to do with with people like me and and maybe even some on New Jersey Transit. The the train station at at MetLife Stadium was designed to move ten to twelve thousand people an hour, and there was thirty five thousand people that tried to take the train after that game, and it took three hours. Exactly what it was designed to do. The problem was. They also had a bus system that was created by some vendor that worked for the NFL, and they expected a larger number of people to take the bus than took the train, and it didn't work out that way. So what so do we learn for, for, the, for the World Cup? What we've learned this time is we need multiple modes of transportation to and from train hubs and, and transit hubs. New Jersey Transit not only is, is, is better at moving people on the the train line that exists now, but they're developing a product called Transit Way, which will be a bus rapid transit uh, system that runs from Secaucus Transit right into the sports complex that will augment the train line. So a combination of the commuter train that moves uh, from Secaucus Transfer, this bus rapid transit, and some some other mobility issues with shuttles and buses and so and private buses and so forth, and we'll do a better job. And there's no better there's no better example than this past summer, Steve, when MetLife Stadium hosted the biggest concert summer series in its history of the it, stadium, and not one glitch, Steve, not one glitch in moving people back to back concerts, eighty plus thousand people. Ed Sheeran had was I think one of the highest uh, attended for for concerts in North America. Uh, and and I happened to be at that particular concert. It was spectacular. And and listen, there's always going to be some 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 delay getting out of the stadiums when you're trying and to. And, and let, let's also include traffic onto the turnpike, onto yeah. Route Three. That's yeah. a, that's part of the deal here. Oh, certainly. And and all of those mobility things. And there and there they are, they have been fixing ramps to and from the turnpike over the years since since uh, since Super Bowl and things like that. And there's a, there's a, you, you know, it's, there's no one fix for this transportation. It's lots of little fixes, and we've been working on lots of little fixes since then. Talk marketing. How that, and go back to what I said before. When we watch it, when we watch the World Cup, those of us who can't get tickets, you watch it. Is it going to say, is it going to be clear that it's coming from New Jersey, from the Meadowlands, or is it going to be New York? 
No, actually, the the stadium will be will be renamed the New York New Jersey Stadium. Every every venue in the country that has a a naming rights deal will be so in other words, so like L A will be L A Stadium, Dallas will be okay. Dallas Stadium, right? There, that's the way FIFA de designed the 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 uh, FIFA the, the folks who regulate soccer. Correct. It's this is the this is the FIFA World Cup, and FIFA is the organizing body for professional soccer and internationally. And so, so it'll be it'll be a combination of both. But 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 you brought up a great word, marketing, right? So what what I've learned uh, now that I'm you know I'm 20 years here at the at, at the chamber, and and I've I've witnessed. I was he, I was here as a member back at the '94 World Cup. Having having taken all this experience, I can tell you this: if we sit back and just wait for people to come to our doors in New Jersey and expect that just because the big all these games are taking place, uh, we're going to be disappointed. And so we need to put some we need to put some financial resources into marketing. That's the state. That's organizations like ours. You know, we need to let people know where all these experiences are so that they can see we and, and we are a better destination today than we were back at Super Bowl. Right. American Dream wasn't even open during Super Bowl. You know, Jim Kirkus is bullish on New Jersey, bullish on the Meadowlands. That's why he's the president and CEO of the Meadowlands Regional Chamber. Hey, Jim. 2026. Looking forward to the World Cup. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for having me. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Jim Kirkus. He's bullish on the World Cup in Jersey. See you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 30 years in public broadcasting. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, a foundation serving children. The Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, PSEG Foundation, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, and by Seton Hall University. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz and by Insider NJ. Great drive fuels the leaders of tomorrow and today. Great vision paves the way for a brighter future. Great ambition goes places, moving onward and upward. Great empathy finds strength in kindness and in each other, working together to create something bigger than they ever imagined. Great minds can change the world, and great minds start at Seton Hall.